can smell Josh whenever I want to in the privacy of my own home. Lily says Josh's synapses were probably misfiring that day due to heat stroke or something. She said he probably thought I looked familiar, but couldn't place my face without the cement block walls of Albert Einstein High behind me. Why else, she asked, would the most popular senior in high school say hey to me, me a Thermopolis, a lowly freshman? But I know it wasn't heat stroke. The truth is, when he's away from Lana and all his jock friends, Josh is a totally different person, the kind of person who doesn't care if a girl is flat-chested or wears size 10 shoes, the kind of person who can see beyond all that into the depths of a girl's soul. I know because when I looked into his eyes that day at Bigelow's, I saw the deeply sensitive person inside him struggling to get out. Lily says I have an overactive imagination and a pathological need to invent drama in my life. She says the fact that I'm so upset about my mom and Mr. G is a classic example. If you're that upset about it, just tell your mom, Lily says. Tell her you don't want her going out with him. I don't understand you, Mia. You're always going around lying about how you feel. Why don't you just assert yourself for a change? Your feelings have worth, you know. All right. Like, I'm going to bum my mom out like that. She's so totally happy about this date, it's enough to make me want to throw up. She goes around cooking all the time. I'm not even kidding. She made pasta for the first time last night in, like, months. I had already opened the Susie's Chinese takeout menu, and she says, Oh, no cold sesame noodles tonight, honey. I made pasta. Pasta. My mom made pasta. She even observed my rights as a vegetarian and didn't put any meatballs in the sauce. <sighs> I don't understand any of this. Things to do. 1. Buy cat litter. 2. Finish foil worksheet for Mr. G. 3. Stop telling Lily everything. 4. Go to Pearl Paint, get soft lead pencils, spray mount, canvas stretchers for Mom. 5. World Civ Report on Iceland. Five pages, double space. Six, stop thinking so much about Josh Richter. Seven, drop off laundry. Eight, October rent. Make sure mom has deposited dad's check. Nine, be more assertive. Ten, measure chest. Thursday, September 25th. In algebra today, all I could think about was how Mr. Giannini might put his tongue in my mom's mouth tomorrow night during their date. I just sat there staring at him. He asked me a really easy question. I swear, he saves all the easy ones for me like he doesn't want me to feel left out or something. And I totally didn't even hear it. I was like, what? Then Lana Weinberger made that sound she always makes and leaned over to me so that all her blonde hair swished onto my desk. I got hit by this giant wave of perfume and then Lana hissed in this really mean voice. Freak! Only she said it like it had more than one syllable, like it was spelled F-U-R-R-E-E-K. How come nice people like Princess Diana get killed in car wrecks, but mean people like Lana never do? I don't understand what Josh Richter sees in her. I mean, yeah, she's pretty, but she's so mean. Doesn't he notice? Maybe Lana is nice to Josh, though. I'd sure be nice to Josh. He is the best-looking boy in Albert Einstein High School. A lot of the boys look totally geeky in our school's uniform, which, for boys, is gray pants, white shirt, and black sweater, long-sleeved, or vest. Not Josh, though. He looks like a model in his uniform. I am not kidding. Anyway, today I noticed that Mr. Giannini's nostrils stick out a lot. Why would you want to go out with a guy whose nostrils stick out so much? I asked Lily this at lunch, and she said, I've never noticed his nostrils before. Are you going to eat that dumpling? Lily says I need to stop obsessing. She says I'm taking my anxiety over the fact that this is only our first month in high school and I already have an F in something and transferring it to anxiety about Mr. Giannini and my mom. She says this is called displacement. It sort of sucks when your best friend's parents are psychoanalysts. Today after school, the doctor's Moskowitz were totally trying to analyze me. I mean, Lily and I were just sitting there playing Boggle, and every five minutes it was like, Girls, do you want some Snapple? Girls, there's a very interesting squid documentary on the Discovery Channel. And, by the way, Mia, 
How do you feel about your mother starting to date your algebra teacher? <sighs> I said, I feel fine about it. Why can't I be more assertive? But what if Lily's parents run into my mom at Jefferson Market or something? If I told them the truth, they'd definitely tell her. I don't want my mom to know how weird I feel about this, not when she's so happy about it. The worst part was that Lily's older brother Michael overheard the whole thing. He immediately started laughing his head off, even though I don't see anything funny about it. He went, Your mom is dating Frank Giannini? <laughs> so, great. Now Lily's brother Michael knows. So then I had to start begging him not to tell anybody. He's in fifth period gifted and talented class with me and Lily, which is the biggest joke of a class, because Mrs. Hill, who's in charge of the G&T program at Albert Einstein, doesn't care what we do as long as we don't make too much noise. She hates it when she has to come out of the teacher's lounge, which is right across the hall from the G&T room, to yell at us. Anyway, Michael is supposed to use fifth period to work on his online web scene Crackhead. I'm supposed to use it for catching up on my algebra homework. But anyway, Mrs. Hill never checks to see what we're doing in G&T, which is probably good, since mostly what we're all doing is figuring out ways to lock the new Russian kid, who's supposedly this musical genius, in the supply closet so we don't have to listen to any more Stravinsky on his stupid violin. But don't think that just because Michael and I are united against Boris Pokowski and his violin, he'd keep quiet about my mom and Mr. G. What Michael kept saying was, What'll you do for me, huh, Thermopolis? What'll you do for me? But there's nothing I can do for Michael Moskowitz. I can't offer to do his homework or anything. Michael is a senior, just like Josh Richter. Michael has gotten all straight A's his entire life, just like Josh Richter. Michael will probably go to Yale or Harvard next year, just like Josh Richter. What could I do for someone like that? Not that Michael's perfect or anything. Unlike Josh Richter, Michael is not on the crew team. Michael isn't even on the debate team. Michael does not believe in organized sports or organized religion or organized anything for that matter. Instead, Michael spends almost all of his time in his room. I once asked Lily what he does in there, and she says she and her parents employ a don't ask, don't tell policy with Michael. I bet he's in there making a bomb. Maybe he'll blow up Albert Einstein High School as a senior prank. Hmm. Occasionally, Michael comes out of his room and makes sarcastic comments. Sometimes when he does this, he is not wearing a shirt. Even though he does not believe in organized sports, I have noticed that Michael has a really nice chest. His stomach muscles are extremely well-defined. I have never mentioned this to Lily. Anyway, I guess Michael got tired of my offering to do stuff like walk his Sheltie Pavlov and take his mom's empty tab cans back to Gristidi's for the deposit money, which is his weekly chore. Because in the end, Michael just said in this disgusted voice, forget it, okay, Thermopolis, and went back into his room. I asked Lily why he was so mad, and she said because he'd been sexually harassing me, but I didn't notice. How embarrassing. Supposing Josh Richter starts sexually harassing me someday, I wish, and I don't notice. God, I am so stupid sometimes. Anyway, Lily said not to worry about Michael telling his friends at school about my mom and Mr. G, since Michael has no friends. Then Lily wanted to know why I cared about Mr. G and Annie's nostrils sticking out so much, since I'm not the one who has to look at them, my mom is. And I said, excuse me? I have to look at them from 9.55 to 10.55 and from 2.30 to 3.30 every single day, except Saturdays and Sundays and national holidays and the summer, if I don't flunk, that is, and have to go to summer school. And if they get married, then I'll have to look at them every single day, seven days a week, major holidays included. Define set. Collection of objects. Element or member belongs to a set. A equals the set containing Gilligan, Skipper, Marianne. Rule specifies each element. A equals the set containing X such that X is one of the castaways on Gilligan's Island. Friday, September 26th. Lily Moskowitz's list of hottest guys, compiled during World Civ with commentary by Mia Thermopolis. 1. Josh Richter. Agree, six feet of unadulterated hotness blonde hair often falling into his clear blue eyes and that sweet, 
sleepy smile. Only drawback, he has the bad taste to date Lanel Weinberger. 2. Boris Polkowski. Strongly disagree. Just because he played his stupid violin at Carnegie Hall when he was 12 does not make him hot. Plus, he tucks his school sweater into his pants instead of wearing it out like a normal person. 3. Pierce Brosnan, best James Bond ever. Disagree. I like Timothy Dalton better. 4. Daniel Day-Lewis in Last of the Mohegans. Ugh, oh, agree. Stay alive, no matter what occurs. 5. Prince William of England. Duh. 6. Leonardo in Titanic. As if. That is so 1998. 7. Mr. Wheaton, the crew coach. Hot, but taken. Seen opening the door to the teacher's lounge for Mademoiselle Klein. 8. That guy in the jeans ad on that giant billboard in Times Square. Totally agree. Who is that guy? They should give him his own TV series. 9. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman's Boyfriend. Whatever happened to him? He was hot. 10. Joshua Bell, The Violinist. Totally agree. It would be so cool to date a musician. Just not Boris Polkowski. Later on Friday. I was measuring my chest and totally not thinking about the fact that my mom was out with my algebra teacher when my dad called. I don't know why, but I lied and told him mom was at her studio, which is so weird because obviously dad knows mom dates, but for some reason I just couldn't tell him about Mr. Giannini. This afternoon during my mandatory review session with Mr. Giannini, I was sitting there practicing the foil method, first, outside, inside, last, first, Outside, inside, last, oh my god, when am I ever going to have to actually use the foil method in real life? When? And all of a sudden, Mr. Giannini said, Nia, I hope you don't feel, well, uncomfortable about my seeing your mother socially. Only for some reason, for a second, I thought he said sexually, not socially. And then I could feel my face getting totally hot, I mean, like, burning. And I said, Oh, no, Mr. Giannini, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> and Mr. Giannini said, Because if it bothers you, we can talk about it. I guess he must have figured out I was lying since my face was so red. But all I said was, Really? <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I, I mean, it bothers me a little. But really, I'm fine with it. I mean, <laughs> it's just a date, right? Why get upset about one measly date? That was when Mr. Giannini said, well, Mia, I don't know if it's going to be one measly date. I really like your mother. And then I don't even know how, but all of a sudden I heard myself saying, Well, you better, because if you do anything to make her cry, I'll kick your butt. Oh, my God, I can't even believe I said the word butt to a teacher. My face got even redder after that, which I wouldn't have thought possible. Why is it that the only time I can tell the truth is when it's guaranteed to get me into trouble? But I guess I am feeling sort of weird about the whole thing. Maybe Lily's parents were right. Mr. Giannini, though, was totally cool. He smiled in this funny way and said, I have no intention of making your mother cry, but if I ever do, you have my permission to kick my butt. So that was okay, sort of. Anyway... Dad sounded really weird on the phone, but then again, he always does. Transatlantic phone calls suck because I can hear the ocean swishing around in the background and it makes me all nervous like there are fish listening or something. Plus, Dad didn't even want to talk to me. He wanted to talk to Mom. I suppose somebody died and he wants Mom to break it to me gently. <gasps> Maybe it was Grandmère. Hmm. My breasts have grown exactly none since last summer. Mom was totally wrong. I did not have a growth spurt when I turned 14 like she did. I will probably never have a growth spurt, at least not on my chest. I only have growth spurts up, not out. I am now the tallest girl in my class. Now, if anybody asks me to the cultural diversity dance next month, <laughs> yeah, right, I won't be able to wear a strapless dress because there isn't anything on my chest to hold it up. Saturday, September 27th. I was asleep when my mom got home from her date last night. I stayed up as late as I could because I wanted to know 